bow your head with me, please. Let's pray. Let's pray. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, our Father. Good morning again, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, my Father, our Father, I, I, I am incapable of doing this. I am the least of all saints, Lord. I am a sinless chief, and I can't do this. I can't. This, this is in your hands, Lord. Lord, of all the people that you have chosen to speak your word, Lord, please, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, get me out of the way. Remove me from this equation, Lord, that thou, Lord, may speak unto your congregation, to your people, to edify the body of Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, the church of the living God. And Lord, that thou may be glorified, that you enrich the brethren and sisters, Lord, that you speak to their hearts, that you guide us into all truth, Lord, that, um, that we take heed to your word, Lord, that we learn of you and how we are to behave ourselves in these days and uh, how to adhere ourselves unto you and to your word. Please, Lord, be with my mouth. Give me, please, Lord Jesus Christ, Father, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and all skill and learning. May I have your blessings with, uh, and able to speak. That you may be glorified, Lord. That you, Lord Jesus Christ, you yourself, my God, our Father, that you may be glorified. Please bless this word. Please give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and understanding hearts. Lord Jesus, uh, my Father, that you may be glorified. Thou, Lord, I will be done. My God, my Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask this all in Jesus' name, our Father. And God's people said, Amen. <clears throat> uh, very quickly, uh, beloved brethren. Please do keep in your prayers our beloved brother Jeffrey Jones. Um, he left a comment on one of my videos here about how at his apartment building they're making him wear masks. Uh, uh, please do keep your brother Jeffrey Jones in prayer about his struggles that he is going through. And also too, brethren, um, do keep um, our beloved sweet brother um, Aaron Darren Judge in your prayers. That young man, that sweet young man, you know, you and I, we can have a meal, right? One or two a day, sometimes three, depending on whatever. We get a good meal. That sweetheart, that beloved young brother, he struggles with eating uh, keeping food down. You know, okay, the uh, the health issues and problems that that fine young man, our brother, goes through on a daily basis. And those of you who attack that fine young brother, you're going to have to answer the Lord for that. Okay? The Lord speaks through our brother Aaron Judge. Aaron Deering Judge. The Lord rebuke you, but uh, brethren, please keep him in your prayers. And also to um, the beloved uh, Matthew Landau, our brother, um, he's also going through some struggles, but he has also been blessed greatly by being able to keep busy. Uh, please do remember to keep him in your prayers. Um, and also, of course, the beloved Matthew Melanson and his wife Jen and his two sons. Um, they, um, they're going through some stuff right now. And they could use all the prayers of the brethren that they um, that they get, and also, of course, that our beloved brother Matthew Melanson may have ease in his body today. 
because um, for what that fine brother struggles with on a daily basis, you and I can't even imagine. And there again, those of you who attack that fine, fine, sweet, beloved brother, Lord rebuke you. You're going to have to answer to that. And also, too, keep um, in your uh, prayers um, our brethren and sisters in Australia, uh, in particularly our brother 982, Brother Justin, um, who is in Australia, of course. Uh, please keep the body of Christ, the Church of the Living God, in your prayers in Australia. Um, it's, whoa, the more I learn about what's going on over there, man. My goodness, my goodness gracious. And uh, and also for all the brethren, you know, uh, Matthew Green, Matthew Green, keep him in your prayers. Uh, Brother Christopher Lappin, um, who I have not heard tale from for a while. Um, oh, Brother Jacob Thompson, Brother uh, Brian Denlinger, um, uh, Brother Frederick Noon. Hope you're doing okay, brother. Uh, our sweet beloved brother uh, Jeff Allen uh, and brother Victor Manjivar. Um, uh, just there's so many, so many brethren that we pray for daily. And of course, brethren, please do keep in your prayers our beloved brother, my dear friend, Alexander Hartley, um, who moved and um, it's catching up to him. And he's dealing with a lot of um, stress and things within his life at the moment so keep him in your prayers and also for Philip Newton please uh, keep him in your prayers please do not forget uh, Philip Newton okay um, and uh, remembering that words have meaning wink wink <laughs> but uh, anyway if I forgot to mention your name please forgive me you are not forgotten in prayer I love you. I love you. And for the sisters, too. Um, I love you. And thank you. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Hope you're hungry today. We, we, got, uh, we got something for you. We got something for you. A beloved brother uh, basically gave me the outline for this and um, kind of added here and there. But um, this is actually, um, this was a joined effort with the brother, like I said, giving me the outline. And, um, and so you know, brethren, Church of the Living God, my one email is on the channel, okay? If you, if you have something like that, feel free, okay? But, Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. And turn in your King James scriptures to Matthew chapter 10. We are going to be bouncing around in the scriptures today. Your Bible is going to get a workout today. Excuse me. Excuse me. Your scriptures. See? I'm still working on it, Brother Matthew. Love you. <laughs> but your scriptures are going to get a workout today. So, turn in your scriptures to Matthew chapter 10. We are going to be reading verses 14 on to verse 20 to start. And we're going to look at a bunch of corresponding scriptures as we go. Matthew chapter 10, verses 10 on to verse 20. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> Matthew chapter 10, verses 14, on to verse 20. Beg your pardon, beg your pardon. Matthew 10, verses 14, on to verse 20. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in that in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. 
the name of this uh, video. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. This is pre-crucifixion, uh, remember. Doctrinally, still under the Old Testament, under the law. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in the, that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And who is our Father? <clears throat> Look at verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore, therefore wise as serpents, and harmless as doves. We are not we are not to be ignorant of the devil's devices, but we are not to behave as the lost world in order to get the uh, gospel across. Okay, who does that? By the way, we or the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. Second Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 22 under verse 26 Flee also youthful lusts but follow righteousness faith charity peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Is that call anything again? But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach patience. You don't go in like a bull in a china shop. Hi, I've made that mistake many times before. Uh, like I have said to you many times before, you don't give them the whole sandwich. You give them little morsels. That's what the gentle is referring to. Okay, You don't be a, uh, a little sissy foot about uh, things. You know, you, uh, you speak the truth with word. Okay? But the gentle there is not overburdening, not giving them too much to handle at first. Because if you can do that, that will really backfire on you. And I speak from my experience, unfortunately, to my shame. Okay, let's continue. In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God for adventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Look at verse 25. In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. Those of you out there who reject the true gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, our God and Father. Those of you who reject that, who reject the truth, who reject this word, this book, these scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures. You're opposing yourself. You're doing harm to yourself. You're opposing yourself. You are doing worse to yourself by rejecting the truth than if you were to humble yourself and repent of your self-righteousness and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and call upon His name You're opposing yourself. I can hear my telephone going off in the background. I 
wonder if that's my beloved brother Alexander. <laughs> Titus ta uh, chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. I'm going to read this whole chapter. I hope you can hear Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. To speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, shewing all meekness unto all men. Okay, we're not, again, we're not supposed to be bulls in the china shop. We're not through violence, force, or um, manipulation as through linguistics. We're not supposed to do that. This, the scriptures... Through the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that Spirit, does the convicting. Not our rhetoric, not our charisma, or anything like that. No, no, no. It is the Lord. We are vessels unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's continue. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Do you get that? But according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior that being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto all men. But avoid Foolish questions. Again, what is a fool? A fool has said in his heart there is no God. And genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. You know, brethren, the best thing you can do with um, these heretics, the people who attack you, don't give them the uh, time of day See, because they want you to respond. They want you to engage them. They want you to notice their attack on you. They have no concern for um, edification of the body of Christ because they are not of the church of the living God. Okay? You want to do, you want to fight these heretics who attack you? You want to know the best way to do it? Avoid them. Give them, not the, uh, give them not the time of day. Beg your pardon, but don't even give them the sweat off of your backside. That really gets them upset. <clears throat> when I shall send Artemis unto thee, or Tychicus, be diligent to come unto me to Nicopolis, for I have determined there to winter. Bring Zenos the lawyer and Apollos on their journey diligently, that nothing be wanting unto them. And let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses, that they be not unfruitful. All that are with me salute thee. Greet them that love us in the faith. Grace be with you all. Amen. Jude, 
We're going to be in Jude twice today. But right now, Jude 17 on to verse 25. Jude verse 17 on to verse 25. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. <laughs> These be they who separate themselves, sensual, led by their senses, having not the Spirit, and that's a capital S, having not the Lord, our Father, indwelling in them, the Lord Jesus Christ. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Like I've said to you before, sometimes when the Holy Ghost will guide you, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, sometimes he will have you to scare the hell out of someone. And um, that is effective. But see, again, brethren, you have to allow the Lord to do His work through you. See? Because when you get into the way and start doing it off of your memory, or doing it by um, representative, like, um, you know, by repetitious kind of things, that hinders the work of Christ. I don't know about you, but I don't want to hinder the work of Christ. But that said, if you are one of those who are hindering the work of the body of Christ, uh, you need to be uh, checking yourself, because hmm, he could reward you pretty good for that, if you know what I'm saying. Let's continue. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. First Timothy now. First Timothy chapter three. First Timothy chapter three, verses one on to verse ten. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. That's something that I have fallen that has fallen upon me because I don't have children. Um, the reason is, without getting too specific, I cannot have children. I can't. me. Okay? I can't have children. And there are those of you that do have children. Praise the Lord for that. And um, you got to remember, the fruit of the womb is a reward from the Lord. 
and you bring up your children in the nurture and admonition of the word. And um, my love goes to you, fathers and mothers. Let's continue. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. And the devil's sin that got him kicked out was pride. He was the anointed cherub. And he was taken with his own brightness, his own beauty. And a novice, a babe, who thinks that, who has put themselves in a position to teach, could very easily, very easily be lifted up with pride. And you know what else? Verse 6 here does not just, um, is not just for those who are called to teach and to preach. But you can see this also in other aspects of life. At my old job, the uh, manager, uh, who was a girl, um, she was a novice, and she was put into this position because I didn't want it. And immediately, her and she was so full of herself, oh, it was disgusting. You need to have some um, years and experience under you before the Lord can use you. Now, the Lord can use a babe. Yes, he can. And there are those of you who say, well, you know, let no man despise your youth, what he says to Timothy. Paul said that because Timothy was brought up in the scriptures, see, from a child. That's why Paul said that to Timothy. And a babe, or a youngster, if you will, who has, from his youth, or uh, have, from his youth, has been brought up in the scripture, and has not departed from it, hence received the true Jesus Christ of the true scriptures, the King James scriptures, is far less likely to depart from it, see. That's why Paul said that to Timothy. But yes, the Lord can use a babe. But... You can't get around verse 6 here. Let's continue. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. How do you walk out there amongst the lost? See, especially in these days, with the ha <laughs> ha and all this stupid junk that's going on. It's a really bad testimony unto you, beloved brother and sister, if you cave in and compromise. How, today, how could anyone of the Church of the Living God go to witness unto a lost person? I, that, I, that just, how, how could, you know, how? How could you be... How could your insides not be tearing you up? How can, how can the Lord not be just burdening you with guilt and shame? If you are of the Church of the Living God, and you're out there, rah, 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 and trying to witness on to the lost. I don't get that. I don't get that. Verse 8. Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let these and let these also first be proved, then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless. It's your qualifications. Back to Titus. Titus chapter 1, verses 6 on to verse 16. Now note this. 
Uh, Titus chapter 1, verses 6 on to verse 16. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, the husband of one wife, ladies, women, according to this book, you're not supposed to be preachers. You're not supposed to be teaching the church of the living God. Other, uh, other women, yes. Children, yes. But as far as teaching and preaching, you are, you know, no, that's not what the scripture says. And I've run into arguments from people who say they are of the church of the living God, make statements like, well, that's what Paul wrote. Really? Uh, Paul alone wrote this? Well, well, well yeah, that is, shh. is this God's word? Huh? Is this perfect? Huh? Yeah. Right? You ever run into that? You rebuke them sharply. I, I have. I've, I've run into that. And so, well, that's what Paul said. You know, and the time was different. <laughs> uh, the Lord rebuke you. Sorry there, ladies. Scriptures are plain. Unless you decide to get a Bible version that suits you instead of cuts you. Let's continue. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not, of, not accused of riot or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed. Note that, not self-willed. You don't do this out of your own power. My goodness. If you do, who's getting the glory? You're the one looking good, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not self-willed. Not soon angry. Not given the wine, no striker, not giving to filthy lucre. Filthy lucre is money, man, mammon. Um, this is my passion. I would do this even if I would not receive one penny. I would, because this is my passion. You can't be doing this just to make a living. Brethren, if the Word of God is not your passion, if serving our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, is not your passion, then shut up. Then shut up. Check yourself. Okay, let's continue. But a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Now check this out. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. See, for filthy lucre's sake. You see right here, vain talkers and deceivers, who subvert houses, teaching things which they ought not, for the love of money is the root of all evil, for which, while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, and have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. See, there's a turn right here in verse 10. We are to be as wise as serpents, as serpents, and as harmless as doves. But when it comes to the truth of the gospel, what do we see here? Whose mouths must be stopped. How do you stop them? By putting a fist in their mouth? No. By over-talking them? No. 
by um, using the art of controversy? No. Rhetoric? No. Through the Spirit, the Holy Ghost and the Lord Jesus Christ our Father is that Spirit. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said the Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore, now look at that, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. Sometimes, brethren, you do have to rebuke people, and sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. You don't do it to get a, you know, another notch in your pistola. You put another notch in your belt. No. That they may be sound in the faith. You know, brethren, when I've been rebuked by the brethren and corrected, um, it is because that I may be sound in the faith. The longer you walk with the Lord, like I've said to you before, you will appreciate correction and appreciate rebuke. Not do this deflecting when, oh, thank you so much, but here's what you did. No, 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 no. That's a, that's a red flag if there has ever been one. Okay? Let's continue. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and the commandments of Catholics <coughs> and the commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. Oh boy, that, that verse right there sure brings to memory some people that I am aware of. <laughs> hey, you're talking about here in the scripture. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. Now see right here, the easy believism heretic will come in and it's like, well, just because they aren't doing this, it doesn't mean they're lost. There is, yeah, there's a little argument with that, but these guys, they go way off the charts. Someone who has zero fruit, zero fruit, zero good works, which is a product of being saved, born again, sealed onto the day of redemption. Okay? Uh, look, you can say and profess that you know God and that you're saved. You shall know them by their fruits. Yeah. But let's now look back here at verse 10. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. And look at verse 7 where it says, For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed. Not self-willed. Not soon angry. Not given to wine. No striker. Not giving to filth, given to filthy lucre. Okay, you see that comparison there? With that said, go to Jude 3, uh, Jude verses 3 on the verse 4. Okay, Jude 3 and 4. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in, crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this common condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. 
So see, we are con we are to contend for the faith which was once circle that circle that I got that once delivered unto the saints. We are to contend for the faith, not as the world does, not as the world does. Go to Acts chapter seventeen. Acts chapter seventeen. Acts chapter 17, verses 16. Whoa, Brad. Verses 16 on to verse 21. Acts 17, verses 16 on to verse 21. Now, while Paul waited for them in Athens, his spirit was stirred in him. When he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Hey, let me ask you something, brother, sister. Does it bother you that when you're outside, I'm using myself as an example, that you see Catholics passing out Catholic tracts, inviting them to their church buildings? Does it bother you? Does it stir you that the Jehos are still out there? They're not. I haven't seen them going to door door to door of late, but they're still out there, uh, putting their poison. The morons, the Mormons. Does it stir you when you run into a son of Ishmael who believes in? Catholicism, i.e. Islam. Hmm? Are you stirred by these things? Or do you just say, no, you know, it's not my problem. I'm just too busy for it. No, we are to contend for the faith. Once delivered unto the saints. We are to contend. Not like not brawlers. Not like the world. Okay? Does it bother you? Verse 17, therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that went with him. You know, there are those out there who dispute gospel tracting. Um, Right here, it says, Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. <clears throat> Gospel tracting, brethren, is a lovely thing to do. It's planting seeds. Okay? It is a very good work to do. For our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when he calls you to do so okay don't let anybody try to tell you that gospel tracting is useless or vain you don't know you don't know who's going to take that track or who's going to pick up that track and that seeds going to be planted maybe there have been seeds planted already you don't know you don't know Gospel tracting is a worthwhile effort, a good work, okay? Let the Lord guide you in doing it. I personally, still, to this day, make time to uh, hand out gospel tracts and to put them on cars or wherever I can you know, go to put them, okay? I make time for gospel tracts. So don't let anyone try to uh, rain on you that uh, gospel tracking is not a good work. Don't let anyone uh, persuade you otherwise, okay? Let's continue. Then certain philosophers of the Eupicreans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? Other some, he seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. 
So see, they were coming to him because of what he preached. And they took him and brought him onto the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine, may we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is, for thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. And you know what? We might as well, of course, for all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. So a door was open there to Paul. And as you were to continue reading, he went right through it. Because the Lord was the one who opened that door. Because look who assembled onto him because of him preaching Jesus and the resurrection. Hello? Get it? Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Verses 9 under verse 21. Now remember, keep this in mind. We are to contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. Forgive me for uh, butchering that. Okay? We are to contend. All right? The mouths of those who teach contrary to this word, to these scriptures, must be stopped. And it's the Lord who will do that through the scriptures. But we have to remember these things. We, we have to remember this. Galatians chapter 5, verses 9 under verse 21. Yeah, I love this. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Got a little sin going on in you, huh? Fellowshipping with someone who the Lord has kind of made plain to you that you shouldn't? Are you compromising in things that you know you shouldn't even dare be doing, huh? A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence in you, though, uh, through the Lord. I have confidence in you through the Lord, that ye will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. Jesuits! <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Just a little congestion. Nothing serious. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? In other words, if I preach their gospel, why am I being persecuted? I would they were even cut off, which troubled me. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only you. Hello, people. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. People will take verse 13 and just <laughs> run off in directions that are just <laughs> but by love serve one another. But by love serve one another. I love you. This is my passion. Okay? Others have different callings. Going out gospel tracting. Being blessed so that they can help the poor saints. But by love, serve one another. This is the way that, uh, one of the ways that the Lord has called me to serve. You, by love. Because I love you. I truly do. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
But, but if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Oh boy. Gotta get even. Hmm? You did that to me, I'm gonna do that to you, huh? Let me let me let me ask you plainly here, brethren. What happened? What would happen? Put yourself in this situation. What would happen if you were given the opportunity to give the gospel unto a Jewish woman? And through the scriptures, you the through the scriptures, the Lord was speaking through you unto that Jewish woman. The gospel. Showing how Jesus is the Passover. Okay? And stuff like that. How would you, Church of the Living God, how would you handle if this Jewish woman got so enraged at you that she spat Right in your face. How would you handle that? How would you handle that? Think about that. Well, how would you handle if you had the scriptures and were preaching on to a homeless man? Who got so enraged in uh, what you were saying, saying that he ain't good, you know, in Romans chapter 3. That he gets so mad, his his face uh, goes bright red, his countenance goes like that, and who shoves you down on your backside. How would you handle that? How would you handle a fellow brother who has a moment of weakness and loses his cool with you? How would you handle it? This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts, the lust of the flesh. Thank you, Mark. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, and the Lord is that Spirit, Ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Go to Proverbs now. Proverbs chapter fourteen. Well, I, I know in my heart, uh, uh, the Lord knows my heart. I believe in my heart. The Lord knows my heart. I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, there's no, you couldn't tell the difference between me and a lost person, but the Lord knows my heart. I know that offends some of you, but you know what? When it comes, when I hear that, that just chafes my buttocks. Sorry, it, it really does. That is the most lame, disgusting excuse of a false convert that I have ever heard in my life. And brethren, you know what? With the Church of the Living God, 
I've heard those of the Church of the Living God have, yes, said that. Even then, it's like, yeah, yeah, brother or sister, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, the Lord knows your heart. You need to repent of what you're doing right now. Or else it's going to get worse for you. You know what I'm saying? Proverbs chapter 14, verses 10 under verse 22. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful, and the end of that mirth is heaviness. Uh, hi. When you are out of fellowship of the, with the Lord, you can try to mask it with many things. But, verse 10, the heart knoweth his own bitterness. See, those are the church of the living God who will fall back onto that lame excuse, well, the Lord knows my heart. Yes, okay? But those of the church of the living God who fall back on that, will eventually run into, even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful. And the end of that mirth, mirth is heaviness. You're not going to get away from it. You can't hide. You can't cover over your lack of fellowship with the Lord. Get, get, get down on them knees and have a, little, have a little guts. Say, Lord, chasten me, rebuke me, correct me. Open mine eyes, show me my sin, show me mine error, and Lord, beat me like a stepchild. Bring your rod upon me. Correct me. You might be saying, whoa, whoa, Brad, you better be careful. Look, look you, you listen to me. You messing around with the Lord and out of fellowship, and we are called to be as wise as serpents and harmless as doves. See, when you're out of fellowship, there's a little, um, take your part. I'm going to make my point plain. There's a turd in the punch bowl. You know what I'm saying? And unless that poison's out of there, that's going to affect everything, including how you behave out there there, your testimony, your walk amongst the lost. Let's continue. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. You will reap what you're, sow, what you're sowing, trust me. And a good man shall be satisfied from himself. The contrast. The simple believe every word. But the prudent man looketh well to his going. Search the scriptures daily to see whether these things be so, you could say. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil. What's our job? Job 28, 28. You ought to know that one by heart. If you don't, pause this, go find it, and then get back. right. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. <laughs> like a uh, beloved uh, brother Matthew Mellinson said to me last night, and this is true, and even brother Brian has said this, some of the worst attacks that you as the Church of the Living God are going to get are from those who call themselves Christians. Atheists, like, look, dude, I don't want to hear it. Just shut up, go away. Just shut up. I don't want to hear it. Okay? But, especially here on YouTube, they get personal. They look for any kind of dirt they can get on you. And again, what is a fool according to Scripture? 
The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. But the fool rageth and is confident. I know I'm saved. You bleep, 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 bleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I believe you there, man. <laughs> yeah. Let's continue. <laughs> and, and look at verse 17. You got to love that. He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly. Yeah. <laughs> and a man of wicked devices is hated. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. The evil bow before the good, and the wicked at the gates of the righteous. The poor is hated, even of his own neighbor. <laughs> but the rich hath many friends. He that despiseth his neighbor sinneth. Now look at that. Hold up. The poor is hated even of his own neighbor. But the rich hath many, many friends. And notice this. He that despiseth his neighbor sinneth. So see in verse 20 where it says the poor is hated even as of his own neighbor. And right there, but the rich hath many friends. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Right? He that despiseth his neighbor sinneth, whether he be poor or rich. But he that hath mercy on the poor, happy is he. I should have just shut up and let scripture define itself. Thank you, Mark. Do not err. Do not they, ah, excuse me. Do they not err that devise evil? But mercy and truth shall be to them that devise evil. Good. Now, again, about the heart right here. The heart knoweth his own bitterness. I, again, uh, I have to just obliterate this ridiculous, oh, the Lord knows my heart. The Lord knows my heart. <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. Genesis chapter 6. Verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And verses 11 on to verse 13. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Because that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. How do you... How do you think the Lord feels about today? Especially here in America. And the poor brethren in Australia too. And in your nation. There's a difference between long-suffering and patience, don't you know? This is the Lord's long-suffering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And of course, Jeremiah. Of course we had to go. You had, Of course, of course. Jeremiah, what, what chapter? That's right, 17. Verses 9 on to verse 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. You will reap what you sow. 
and you will have consequence, whether good or whether it be evil. Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28, verses 25 and verse 26. He that is of a proud heart stirth up strife. Pride. Pride. You could say pride is the mother <laughs> of all sins. He that is of a proud heart stirth, stirreth up strife. But note this. But he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fast. Aha! Aha! See, you have to know that your heart is no good. But see, you know that. But he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. He that trusteth in his own heart is a... What? Fool. Oh, and by the way, that does cross dispensational lines. But whoso walketh wisely shall be delivered. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1, not 5, Brad. 1 on verse 12. Here's the remedy. My son, oh, yeah, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Uh -huh. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. How do you write it upon the ta table of thine heart? How shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto? According to thy word. See, without this, you're lost. <laughs> you're, <laughs> I mean, you are. You are. You, you're, you're a blind man running a race. Let's continue. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out new wine. My son, despise, pay attention. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Oh, and incidentally, there are those out there who say they are of the church of the living God, but do not read the scriptures. There are those out there that who are claiming to be Christians, but they don't read the scriptures. That's what I meant by uh, without being in the Word. That's what I meant by that. Okay? You need to be in this book. You need to be in the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures. Daily. Here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept. Because you can't trust your heart. See, without being grounded in the scriptures, you're just leaving yourself open for all kinds of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Now, note here it says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Exodus. Chapter 
21. Catholics in their Bible, the Catechism, um, Exodus chapter 21. Verses 1 on to verse 20. Uh, Catholics like to um, say that you have to keep the commandments today in order to be saved. The Ten Commandments. Uh, before we get to that, uh, we'll change up here. Go to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Okay? Keep my commandments. Now, today, we do not keep the Ten Commandments to be saved or stay saved. But there are commandments, of course, given unto us, the body of Christ, the church of the living God. Romans chapter 13, verses 8, on to verse 14. Okay? Here are our commandments for today in this dispensation. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. And that knowing the time, that now is the high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly, as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Now, Exodus chapter 21, verses 1 on to verse 20. Now these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. If thou buy an Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master give him a wife, he shall have, and she have borne him sons or daughters. The wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. Note this. And if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or unto the doorpost, and his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. You know, <clears throat> and that is not justification for a man today to wear an earring, just, just so you know, okay? And if a man sell his daughter to be a maidservant, she shall not go out as the men servants do. If she please not her master, who hath betrothed, betrothed her to himself? Then shall he let her be redeemed. To sell her unto a savage, unto a strange nation, he shall have no power, seeing he hath dealt deceitfully with her. And if he hath betrothed her unto his son, he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters. If he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage shall not shall he not diminish. And if he do not these three unto her, then shall she go out free without money. He that smiteth a man so that he die shall surely shall be surely put to death. And if a man lie not in wait, but God deliver him into his hand, then I will appoint thee a place whither he shall flee. Capital punishment. I'm all for capital punishment. So are they in Texas. 
But if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him with guile, thou shalt take him from mine altar, that he may die. And he that smiteth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. And he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. And he that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. And if men strive together, and one smite another with a stone, or with his fist, and he die not, but keepeth his bed, if he rise again, and walk abroad upon his staff, then shall he that smote him be quit. Only he shall pay for the loss of his time, and shall cause him to be thoroughly healed. And if a man smite his servant or his maid with a rod, and he die under his hand, he shall be surely punished. Now, let's go to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel, chapter 18. We are to be wise and to do justly according to the scriptures to be good examples unto the lost, to not be strikers, but to contend for the faith. Here's a little more instruction in righteousness for us. Psalm 18, verses 10 under verse 16. And you can read the context on your own time. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit, lowercase s, from God came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house. And David played with his hand, as at other times. And there was a javelin in Saul's hand. And Saul cast a javelin, for he said, I will smite David, even through the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. Now note this. Here an evil spirit was upon Saul from God. God allowed an evil spirit to come on upon him. Okay. And here David was playing with his hand, a servant of the Lord. And we see Saul got irritated and threw a javelin at him to kill him. And David avoided out of his uh, presence twice. Have you ever been around someone, especially those who call themselves Christians, and you're reading the true scriptures, the real scriptures, you seem to get a little antsy, or they fall asleep? warning sign. Let's continue. And note this. Note this. And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him from him and made him captain over a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. And right here. Right here. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways. Oops. And the Lord was with him. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he, was be that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David, because he went out and came in before them. Here's something to note there, Church of the Living God. Now, they might claim that they might not be afraid of you physically, but you're witnessing to a professing Christian, and you're going through the true scriptures with them, and they get antsy, and they get mad. But they say, the, the Lord knows my heart. Yeah, yeah. They're afraid. Not of you. They're afraid of the Lord. They don't fear him as to serve him and to love him. No, they're afraid because they know that you're his servant. The devils also believe and tremble. Where is that? Huh? You ought to know that one by heart.
1 Samuel now 24, verses 9 on to verse 15. <coughs> and this is where uh, Saul was hunting David. Because he was afraid of David. Okay? Check this out. This, this one is really good. This is really good. So, and David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thy hurt. Thank you, pardon. Seeketh thy hurt. Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how that the Lord had delivered thee today into mine hand, to in the cave. And some bade me kill thee, but mine eyes spared thee. And I said, I will not put forth mine hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Moreover, my father, note that, even though Saul was trying to kill him, he was his, um, wait, wait, not stepfather, uh, yeah, step, no, uh, father-in-law, excuse me, okay? Look at that. Look at what reverence David paid to Saul, who was trying to kill him. Get it? Moreover, my father, see, yea, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand. For in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe, and killed thee not. Now that know thou, and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in mine hand, and I have not sinned against thee, yet thou huntest my soul to take it. The Lord judge between me and thee, and the Lord avenge me of thee. But mine hand shall not be upon thee. Oh, let them alone, brother, sister. You haven't done anything to them except the word that you preach, the scriptures, the Lord through the scriptures, cut them. So what do they do? They attack you. Let them alone. Because the Lord judged between me and thee. And the Lord avenge me of thee, but mine hand shall not be upon thee. It's like you say to him, we're the least of your problems. You're going to have to deal with the Lord at the great white throne of judgment. <laughs> After whom, oh, as saith the proverb of the ancients, wickedness proceedeth from the wicked. But mine hand shall not be upon thee. After whom is the king of Israel come out? After whom dost thou pursue? After a de dead dog? After a flea? And you'll see that with people. Here on YouTube especially. They'll go after the small guys. Unless they want to make a name, then they go after big guys, you know, like Brother Brian. The Lord therefore be judge, and judge between me and thee, and see, and plead my cause, and deliver me out of thine hand. This is good instruction and in righteousness for us today, brethren, sisters, especially once we are being attacked on how we ought to behave ourselves as the church of the living God. Now let's look at another really really good example of this from David Psalm 35 I told you I hope you was hungry uh, let's see Psalm 35, we will read, I was going to read this whole, I was going to read this whole psalm, but we're just going to read verses 9 on to verse 16. Or actually, let's read verses 7 on to verse 16, okay? Verses 7 on to verse 16, 
Okay? Go there. For without cause have they hid for me their net in a pit, which without cause they have digged for my soul. Let destruction come upon him at unawares, and let his net that he hath hid catch himself into that very destruction, let him fall. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord, it shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee, which deliverest the poor from him that is too strong for him? Yea, the poor and the needy from him that spoileth him. False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things I knew not. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned into my own bosom. I behaved myself as though he had been my friend or brother. I bowed down heavily as one that mourneth for his mother. But in mine adversity, they rejoiced. See the contrast there? And gathered themselves together. Yea, the abjects gathered themselves together against me, and I knew it not. They did tear me and cease not. With hypocritical mockers and feasts, they gnashed, they gnashed upon me with their teeth. You know, when uh, Ed Feniger, when it came out that he had cancer and was going through stuff, I prayed for him. I prayed for him to get saved. I did. And that whole lot, they'd love to see guys like Brian, myself, Sweet, Aaron, Judge, Philip. They'd love to see us dead while we pray that they may be humbled and get saved. Ecclesiastes. My wife is going to be home within a half an hour, so I might pause this and go into the bedroom. So if it changes suddenly and you see a different, that, that's why, just so you know. Okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verses 11 under verse 22. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, uh, uh, verses 11 on to verse 22. Wisdom is good with an inheritance, and by it there is profit to them that see the sun. For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Consider the work of God, for who can make that straight which he hath made crooked? In the day of prosperity be joyful, but in the day of adversity consider. God also has set the one over against the other, to the end, that man should find nothing after him. All things have I seen in the days of my vanity. There is a just man that perisheth in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man that prolongeth his life in his wickedness. Be not righteous over much, neither make thyself over wise. Why shouldest thou destroy thyself? Don't be... So proud of yourself. And very quickly, reference, and I've talked about this in depth before, uh, Ecclesiastes 1 verse 18, For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Okay? Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? It is good that thou shouldest take hold of this. What does he mean by over much wicked? We're, go we're going to find out, so hold up. Yea, also from this withdraw not thine hand. 
For he that feareth God shall come forth of them all. Wisdom strengtheneth the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. Right here. Here is your definition of verse 17. For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. And right here. No, you want to get even, right? <laughs> yeah. Also take no heed unto all words that are spoken. Lest thou hear thy servant curse thee. And here's a little cut to you. Hi. For oftentimes also thine own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise hast cursed others. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Verses 17 on to verse 21. So appropriate. Recompense to recomp ah, beg your pardon. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, Avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, and this is a reference to Proverbs, go find it. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. The sincere milk of the word. For in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Not Galatians. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5. Verses 8 on a verse 14. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now, circle that, but now are ye light in the Lord, walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And... Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. We are to contend for the faith. But rather, reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. And Ephesians 6, verses 5 through 9. Servants, now, on the job. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart, as unto Christ. You don't see your employer as Christ, but you're working for the Lord. Not with eye service, when people are watching. As men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Trust not, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart, because your heart is wicked. Okay? With goodwill doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same 
shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And ye masters, do the same things unto them, forbearing threatening, knowing that your master also in it is in heaven. Neither is there any, neither is there respect of persons with him. Now, you are to serve your employer as you would serve the Lord. And the problem that we are running in today with is when the maxims that a lot of these employers are imposing upon you are contrary to this. Houston, we got a problem. First Peter. First Peter. First Peter chapter two, verses nine on to verse twenty five. Close out that chapter. First Peter chapter two, verses nine on to verse twenty five. Close out that chapter. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now, but now, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you, as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. Among the Gentiles. Peter was the apostle unto the who? Yes. This is, there's doctrine for us today, yes, in First and Second Peter, yes. But remember, Paul was the apostle unto the who? Yes. And Peter was the apostle unto the... Yes. You got that, right? Okay, good. Let's continue. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas... Whereas they speak evil against you as evildoers, they may with your good works which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers. And for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, that with well doing, that with well doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, not knowing better those who say in their heart there is no God, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. Remember, in so doing, you shall pour, uh, uh, put hot coals upon their head. I just paraphrased that even though we read it. Thank your pardon. But, okay? For this is thankworthy. If a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully, like losing your job for not complying to all the idiotic <laughs> and Jesuit maxims. For what glory is it if, when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? It's not a glory, is it? <laughs> I, but, but if, when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. As I like to say, when you fight fire with fire, what wins? Fire. 
When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Well, that's hard to do, isn't it? Sometimes, there, brother, sister, huh? How are you doing at that? <laughs> who, his, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead from sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye are healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now turned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Uh, very quickly, something I've run into. i just got to address this very quickly. Look at verse 24, where he says, Who his own self bear his sins in his own body on a tree. Some nitwits, and I'm being, I'm using Church of the Living God charity there. Some nitwits will say, Oh, he says tree. Where, it's, uh, where Paul talks about the cross. That's a contradiction. Here's how you answer that. Hi, genius. What was the cross made out of? And what, what's a tree made out of? <laughs> if you ever run into that, that's, that's your answer. Hi, I've, I've run into that. And to, and to my shame, I was dumbfounded for a minute. When I ran into that, it's like, you, you're not, you're not, you are serious, okay? Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, that, that's, yeah. In my 12 years, I've run into some pretty silly arguments. I can only imagine what Brother Brian's run into. <laughs> okay. Now, First Peter chapter three, verses eight down to verse sixteen. Eight on the verse six, sixteen, in First Peter chapter three. Eight on the Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Can you have loving pity upon your brother, your sister? Courteous? How are you doing in the compassion department? The other day I had to rebuke my wife. Not having compassion. Sometimes we've got to do that. It was really lacking in compassion. It's like, babe, what, what are you doing? Are, are you loving as a sister? Let's continue. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrawise, blessing. Pray for, praying for them that they may be saved that they may be broken and come to the Lord in repentance. Knowing that ye are there, there unto call, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you, if ye be followers of that which is good? But And if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Pay attention to this. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in thee, that is in you, excuse me, with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. 
Christ. Look at verse 15. There are some out there who will say that we have to answer every single solitary question. And I have had, I've run into people who have, will go to verse 15 here in uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. Not out of the true scriptures, but out of a Roman Catholic Bible. Okay? But, note what it says here. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Sanctify Him in your hearts. Knowing that your heart isn't good, trusting Him and Him alone. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh thee a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. It does not say that you are to answer every single solitary question, does it? We are to avoid foolish questions. And brethren, you'll be able to spot foolish questions the longer you walk with our Lord. Okay? Okay? Now, now, we are going to read Matthew chapter 5 for our instruction in righteousness. But before we do that, brethren, we have to get something straight here. Okay? Go to Luke. Luke chapter 6. Beg your pardon, one quick second, brethren. Be right back. Sorry about that, brethren. I had to check something. The Sermon on the Mount is the constitution of the millennial kingdom. It's all works without it, okay, through the Sermon on the Mount, okay? There's a lot of instruction in righteousness which we are going to be looking at. But we want to address something here, okay? Go to Luke chapter 6, okay? Luke chapter 6. We're going to read verses 33 on to verse 39, okay? Verse 33 on to verse 39. Oh, excuse me, one second again, brethren. Okay, sorry about that, brethren. It's Luke 5, verses 33 on to verse 39. I, I misread my notes. I wrote it down wrong. But let's read this, okay? Luke 5, Luke 5, 33 on to verse 39. And they said unto him, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers? And likewise the disciples of the Pharisees, but thine eat and drink. And he said unto them, Can ye make the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? The king was there. Okay? The king, our father, our Lord Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, was there. The king, offering the kingdom unto the Jews. And those who followed him, his disciples, but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. See, the king was there. And while the king was on the earth, hey, he could do everything. It's like, as king, the uh, miracle of the loaves, feeding of 5,000, okay? Okay. Raising the sick, okay, or raising the dead, healing the sick, as king, God manifest in the flesh, our Father on the earth, okay? And while he is there, can ye make the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? But look at verse 35. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away. From them, and then shall they fast in those days. And he spake unto them a parable, and he spake also a parable unto them. No man putteth a piece of a new garment on an old, if otherwise, then both the new maketh a rent, and the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. Okay? 
the old car, the Old Testament, the New Testament. Okay? There's a difference there. We are within the New Testament because Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures. Okay? He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the old bottles. Some like to say this is about the, uh, the Holy Ghost, but uh-uh. And be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. It says about when um, the reading of the Old Testament, uh, when they read the, New Te uh, the Old Testament, the veil is still upon their eyes. That's in the book of Hebrews. But when they come to the Lord and believe on the Lord, the veil is taken away. Okay? Get it? Let's continue. But new wine must be put into new bottles, being born again. And both are preserved. No man also having drunk old wine straightway desireth new. For he saith, the old is better. It's better under the Old Testament, like the Catholics like to say, because you can boast of your works. But the new, today, Look at verse 35 again. But the days will come. Luke 22 now. Back John. Luke 22, verses 35 on to verse 38. Verses 35 on to verse 38. And Luke 22. And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and script and shoes, lacked ye anything? Already explained that because as king, he could he was providing anything as king, and he and they said nothing. Then said he unto them, But now he that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his script. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, It is enough. But now, he was about to go and be crucified for us, and pay for our sins on the cross. Hence a new dispensation was coming in. You can reference verse 37 on Isaiah chapter 53, okay? A dispensational change was coming. Okay? On that, Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. We have to go through this. We have to go through this. Okay? If you do not rightly divide the word of truth, if you do not approach the scriptures dispensationally, you're going to get into all kinds of trouble. You're going to make a, a, a mess of everything. You have to rightly divide this book, the scriptures. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7, and then we're going to read Matthew chapter 5. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. And what is that mystery? Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, capital S. Here's the mystery. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. That us Gentiles were grafted into the tree of the Jew. 
That's what uh, Romans 11 is about. And I have a whole video addressing that. Okay? Something changed. A dispensation. We're in a new dispensation. The time of the Gentiles. Where you are saved by grace through faith. Okay, you come to the Lord as a broken, contrite sinner. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, what he did for you on the cross. Call on him. They go hand in hand. Okay, and you're saved. The hard part is getting over yourself. Okay, we had to go through that. Okay. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Go there. Can you handle this? Now, it's a little after 1 o'clock. Uh, you might hear some racket if my wife gets home. I'll pause this and go into the bedroom because I we, we're going to get this done. Matthew chapter 5. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, the physical, literal kingdom where Jesus Christ will be ruling and reigning from Jerusalem as king. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Now that's a whole lot of instruction and in righteousness for us today. Isn't it? Let's continue. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but it be but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. A jot and a tittle are markings within the Hebrew uh, alphabet. They're writing. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. This is not written doctrinally for us. Okay, this is instruction in righteousness. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard that it was said of them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Rekha, shall be in danger of the council. 
But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. People will say, well, you call people fools. You're in danger of hell. This is not for us doctrinally. This is for the millennial kingdom, when the king is present. Okay? You have to keep that in mind when reading the Sermon on the Mount. That's why we looked at what we looked at before we started reading this. Okay? This is our instruction in righteousness. Not our doctrine. Let's continue. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Are we, are we doing that today? Offering gifts upon the altar? No. Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him. Lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge. And who's the judge? And the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. The righteous judge, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. Verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery already, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Right there proving that thinking, lustful thoughts about a woman who ain't your wife is sin. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Jesus never had talked about uh, hell, you know. Now again, he's not talking about self-mutilation, or instruction in righteousness. If thy eye offend thee, if you're looking at porn, while playing video games, get it away from you. Let's continue. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it up, cast, cut it off, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee, for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Again, your eye, your hand. What are you looking at? What is your hand touching? Things that we we know our Lord uh, is not approving of. Hollywood movies, pornography, video games. It hath been said, who shall ever put away his who it hath been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committeth adultery. Again, you have, I'll cover that when eventually the Lord leads me on to the uh, video about marriage. Okay? Fornication. Sex outside the marriage bed. Remember, this is for the millennial kingdom. Oh yeah, instruction and righteousness. Yeah. Fornication, sex outside of marriage, adultery, yes, of course, grounds for divorce. Today in this dispensation, there are other grounds, okay? But remember, this is for the millennial kingdom doctrine. Let's continue. Again, ye have heard that it hath been said of them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. Now here is something that does cross dispensational lines. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, the Lord Jesus Christ, king speaking here. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, 
because thou canst not make one hair white or black, naturally. So people like to say, well, I could dye my hair. Yeah, but it's not a natural thing. Get over yourself. But let your communication be yay, yay, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Now he's saying that because look at verse 25, where he says, Agree with thine adversary, agree with thine adversary quickly, while thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge. Who's the judge? The Lord Jesus Christ, the King on earth, ruling from Jerusalem on the throne. And the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Okay? The Lord Jesus Christ, the King on earth in the millennial kingdom. Okay? Let's reread verse 39. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Now that is instruction for righteousness, but if a homeless man is asking, asking you for money, and you know that he's going to go buy booze with it, no, no, no. Hey, I've done this lots of times. Let's go get a sandwich. Let's go get some meat. What, you need socks? Let's, let's, let's go get some socks for you. Huh? This is in context to the king ruling and reigning from the city of the great king, Jerusalem, the kingdom of heaven. You've got to remember that. But this is our instruction in righteousness. You have to remember that. This, see, the Catholics say this is like all it is for us today. No. For the millennial kingdom, yes. For us today, no. This is doctrinally under the Old Testament, and this is the constitution of the millennial kingdom. You have to remember that. Let's continue. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. We see Paul echoing the same thing. That ye may be children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. You know, brethren, nowadays we really have to mind our P's and Q's and make sure that our walk is lining up with this book, the King James Scriptures, the true and real Scriptures, the authorized version. How are we doing? We are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. We are to be aware of them. Know, thy, know thine enemy. But our life is to be conformed to the standards according to this book. What are we doing? You gotta get even? Huh? Wanna fight back? It's not our fight. It's the Lord's fight. Check yourselves. Hi! Check yourselves according to the scriptures. 
And brethren, if you got to repent of something, what you waiting for? To hell with your excuses. Keep fighting good. Anyway, that's it for this one. Um, like I said, a uh, dear brother gave me the outline for this and um, added to it. So brother and I kind of work together on this. And praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord bless you a thousandfold. Anyway, brethren, uh, my wife is not home yet, and it's almost 1.30. So um, very quickly, our anniversary, eight years, married to this beautiful, lovely woman. Our, our anniversary is this Tuesday the 25th, eight years officially. Um, and this weekend, my wife and I are going to be doing some things together uh, tonight. Hopefully, Lord willing, I uh, might take her to her favorite place, one of her favorite places to get dinner tonight, something special. Um, Lord willing, we'll see how that goes. But I'm um, probably not going to be on YouTube for a little while, because like I said, our, our anniversary is coming up. And I, I'm so thankful and gracious and praise the Lord for the beautiful, lovely woman, my wife, my godly wife that he has given me. And I'm so thankful. Uh, my threshing instrument, I call her sometimes, my wife. But uh, I am going to be off of YouTube for a while because, like I said, um, I'm going to be uh, concentrating you know, with, uh, on my wife and doing things with my wife. Unless the Lord stir something uh, in some time. I'm going to be off for a couple of days. Okay, But uh, I love you, brethren. Keep one another in prayer. And uh, fellowship one with another when you get the chance. Uh, they're so precious. And so uh, a jewel to be treasured. And these fakes who attack you, brethren, pay them no mind. Okay? But anyway, brethren, I love you. I've got to go. Zena, got to go outside. You got to go outside for a walk, Zena? Zena? Come here, Zena. Anyway, brethren, I love you. I'm going to upload this here in a little bit. We'll see you in the next video. I'm praying for you. And please keep us in your prayers. Please keep us in your prayers. I love you. In Jesus' name.